Hi friends! I have a really exciting piece to share with you today. Ooh, I'm so excited! So just to give you a hint first, here is the dust bag that it came with. And yeah, it's a vintage Hermes piece. I'm super, super happy to have found this and grabbed it right away. So um, as you can see, the string has already fallen off the bat of the uh, original dust bag. This is the original dust bag. And um, I put it in the Ziploc to preserve it, just like um, a museum piece. <laughs> um, it actually, you know, vintage pieces for me are really kind of that way. It's like an art piece that has a history on its own. It's kind of had its own life um, before we met. So I'm really excited. Um, this dust bag, this co the cotton to it, it feels so delicate at this point that if I, you know, poked my fingers through it really hard, I feel like it would go through. So I will retire it and not use it, but I will definitely hold on to it and keep it um, in this condition um, in, in, in a uh, Ziploc bag. So um, now I... Uh, the reason why I made this purchase, and I wasn't really looking to make any more handbag purchases, honestly, because I feel like the last seven or eight months or so, it's been a little bit um, of a nonstop issue. Um, and not that I haven't let anything go, because I did let uh, a bunch of handbags go as well, and I will create a video on which of the handbags that I've um, phased out of my collection and why and the reasons behind all of that. Um, and so um, this was such an opportunity that I just, I couldn't miss out on. And I'll walk you guys through on exactly what happened. So I purchased this at, on a uh, fashion file and I'm not a avid fashion file shopper. So this is one of the biggest pieces that I've ever gotten from them. And not one of them, it is the biggest piece that I've, and most expensive piece that I've uh, bought on that website so far. I bought smaller, um, you know, possibly SLG items or just smaller items, but nothing um, too major. And um, for, you know, anything that I purchased pre-owned, I generally would definitely have it authenticated. For Fashion File, I feel a lot safer with them. At the same time, that doesn't mean I'm not going to get it authenticated, but being that this piece, I'm, I'm just, I'm so, I'm so, so, so excited about it. I will eventually take it to the Hermes repair and cleaning service. I feel like as long as they accept it, that's essentially um, an authentication, immediate authentication anyway. So that's how I'm gonna um, proceed with this. So again, I purchased it from um, Fashion File and I scored really big because um, number one, I got this because of the color and the size of this bag. Um, it's not the easiest to get um, in retail, especially with the shortages going on right now post pandemic where, um, you know, we just aren't getting a, a ton of, oh, there's a loud car with music going on outside. Sorry about that if you heard that. Um, I sure did. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, uh, the shortage um, post pandemic, I mean, there's just a limitation on what we're going to get offered the rest of this year. And for a um, client like me with, um, you know, fairly low purchase history, I honestly don't feel like I'm ever going to get um, an offer too soon uh, without making a, a, a lot more purchases um, to, to kind of ramp up my, my whole record. Um, you know, deeming that true or not true, I feel like there's there has to be some kind of a relationship formed with your essay by kind of dropping by and also making purchases along the way. And since it's going to take a while before I would ever get a bag in this color and the size, um, it, it just it feels something that's um, that's going to be a long stretch. That's going to happen anytime uh, too soon. So anyway, without further ado, this is the gold color and it's a Kelly in the size 28. So let me just toss this dust bag aside. Oh my God. 
And I'm sorry the lighting is just not doing it justice because I had to turn on my um, my light here and uh, you know there's a yellow tint to it so you might not be seeing it in its truest color. I had some sunlight coming in the windows before but suddenly it became a little gloomy. Um, not gloomy but like cloudy um so anyway i had to turn the room light and um regardless here is the bag and it is a 1978 kelly 28 gold on gold and it is in the kuchival leather um kuchival leather has been discontinued um from hermes so far right now they are using the Epsom leather, which is comparable to this leather. I suppose the treatment of how they make this leather is the same, where it's a calfskin, calfskin leather and they emboss it, and then they finish it with um, something like a top layer to protect it. So um, Epsom is known to be uh, the most durable leathers. And um, for this Kuchival leather, it should function that way, but I honestly do not feel like it's that durable as they say about Epsom. I don't own an Epsom piece, so I don't have that to compare it to. But I do feel like at this point, this bag is so aged, it is 43 years old, um, that if I ran my fingernails through it, it will scratch it. If I ran a key through it, it will scratch it or, or nick it enough that I'm gonna lose that top layer of leather and um, you know losing that color along with it too so I'm not gonna go and do that um, but because of that I feel like it's worthwhile to put it through the Hermes spa so that they can fix it up I've heard that they cannot fix or repair or re you know replenish that top coating that happens on Epson or um, Kojival leather like this but still I think it's worthwhile for them to take a look at it uh, to repair it as best as possible now I feel like, I, now I want to get into the vintage thing. Um, first of all, I love vintage and um, I think it's just something that um, either you love or you don't. Some people just are totally turned off about um, owning pieces that are, that have lived in other homes or <laughs> was owned by somebody else and, and really used. For me, um, the, you know, there's a fine, not a fine line, but um, you know, it can't be a piece that's so used to the point where it's damaged and um, kind of gross and disgusting honestly um, but this like something like this it's 43 years old but kept in such good condition i um i mean i would even call it pristine honestly for 43 years old even if you sat this on a sh on on a shelf for 43 years it's still gonna have some kind of wear and tear you know um so basically from what I have inspected, and I have reviewed it two or three times over already, um, especially comparing it to like the website images that, um, now, first of all, I'm all over the place now, but um, first of all, it took me about three minutes to purchase this item from the website. And the reason behind that is because I trust Fashion File um, enough that um, they have a return policy that even if something goes wrong when I do receive the item, I can return it. Um, a, a, a second big factor is that Kelly 28s are not priced in that in, in the range I paid, which is $6,000 for this bag. And um, I, that to me is kind of a no-brainer, especially when there's nothing dire um, problematic with this bag like the listing itself it didn't say that it had some kind of a major damage or a stain um, nothing was broken like a missing strap or, or a handle or anything like that so um, it and seemingly it came with a lot of its original accessories um, and what's more is that it seemed like it wasn't ever retouched or uh, repossessed in any way by an outside vendor because that to me would flag that I wouldn't be able to submit this through Hermes um, to spa. So all of that said, um, you know, th the three minutes went by really quickly <laughs> and I thought of all of that and I clicked really fast and I bought it. And so, um, you know, now, now that I did get it, I matched it up with the photos and um, it's just, Basically, as I saw as the description and also the photos, with one or two things that were not listed. 
and now um, you know I mentioned that I paid six thousand dollars on this but I was able to get a little bit of reimbursement on this because when it did came, um, arrive I did notice that the glazing on the handle was very frayed and coming apart so um, that's a number one thing that I can see Hermes flagging to, to, to have retouched and redone and worked on. And now this handle is a flat handle, which is different from the rolled handle, which is rounder that they have now. And not that I have anything against the rolled handle, you know, I have it on my Birkin, but I wouldn't want Hermes to like change this handle out completely for a rolled handle. So I'm thinking that this is a simple enough fix that they can just clean the handle and then um, reglaze it and and call it a day because I would like to keep this bag. Let me remove that tag. <laughs> um, I would like to keep this vintage um, bag in its original, like in its original integrity, you know, like original pieces, original everything basically as much as possible. Obviously, if there was a broken piece, I would need that to be replaced. But ideally, I would want to keep it as original as possible. And that's the whole charm of owning vintage pieces, that it seemingly has gone out into the world on its own. Well, not on its own, but <laughs> with somebody else to events that like we can probably never comprehend or, or imagine. You know, like who knows in 43 years where this bag has been? I mean, can you imagine, really? I mean, I, it's almost like a, a friend um, that I've met that um, um, can't really speak back to me, but in some ways, I mean, it is communicating its battle scars or battle wounds and stuff like that. So I really, um, I, these are the reasons why I really love vintage. And uh, as I mentioned, it's sometimes it's not for, you know, it's not for everybody, but for some people that really love vintage, they would know what I, what, what I'm talking about. I'm sure. Just it was a very confident purchase, even though it was so sudden, and that's the reason why um, I, even though I'm kind of stepping away from like purchasing any more handbags because I feel like I've collected enough the past um, seven or eight months. Um, it, it is also a hard to come by piece that I just really had to pull the trigger. Fashion File handled my situation very well, I, I would say. Um, I wasn't expecting um, anything specific. I didn't have a number in my head that they were going to reimburse me on or anything like that. I just really wanted to bring it up to their attention and to know that I am a um, customer of theirs that's, um, that you know appreciates their service, but at the same time, you know, hey, like there are these important elements that wasn't listed. Another part was the lock. Um, there are some parts of it that has like this um, green to it that, um, oh, I can actually pop this open. And so the inside of the bag is really super clean too. Let's take this out. And the inner pockets, they're all super, super clean. I don't know how much you can see. But like there are some marks to it, but there's no major pen marks, no permanent um, discolorations that's going on. There's a little bit of like, I don't know, some situation that happened here. Um, but overall, it's, it's pretty clean inside. And um, it did list that it had a musty odor. Honestly, I feel like it's just... Um, I don't feel like it's a bad scent. It just feels like old, like if you were to walk into a leather, um, a vintage store and pick up something leather, it's kind of like that, you know, not maybe even not that strong. It's really not that strong to me. Um, there's, it's just like a hint of um, like leather, aged leather scent. That's what it smells like basically. So I'm gonna unzip this. And for the zipper, I don't have, I don't know if you can see it. I hope you can see a little bit. I don't have that H stopper that um, that they have on the um, newer bags now, just because of the age of this bag. They didn't have the H stopper back then. So in the larger zipped pocket, it's also very clean inside. I feel like these pockets may have not been used at all. Um, is the lock that it came with. 
and there's just a little bit of like inside the grooves and everything like there's just this little green stuff that can be removed easily and that's due to the age of it and here's a clochette that's very softened so it's um you know this this was a definitely used piece because um some of the like the curling it's still there but it does come with the two keys so basically everything is intact and it's almost like a full set um i don't know if it ever came with raincoats back then i highly doubt that that was the case but um it just doesn't come with the, uh with the box basically but everything else is intact so you can even see that like on this clochette like it's so vintage that even um i don't think it was a technique issue i think it was a tool issue where um you can see the imperfections going on like the gaps in between the threading it's not perfect and not that any of these hermes pieces even the recent ones not that any of them are meant to be perfect because they're handmade so they can't be like perfect like machine made which is the charm of owning um and really loving the brand right um but i i feel like these little quirks are really cool to see and also for this clochette like the leather um that embossing is pretty much rubbed down so on the higher areas where it probably rubs against the leather the most when it was in movement it's smoothed out so this these parts here it's kind of like smooth calfskin and that also is the case for the outer areas of the bag here as well like aligning here especially here some parts of this rounded lower area of the return style like it it's just it lost the pebbling which i kind of feel like is quite charming to have that like it's almost like berenia leather that has um you know that darkening happening it almost feels like that's what what's happened with this bag as well there's discoloration there's darkening there's also like that kind of wear on the um leather as well now this midsection you can still get a lot of grain in here and it's all pretty cool but and you can see that the hardware it's you know a little scratched but overall it's in such good condition there's no like there's not like a, a piece of um a gold missing or anything like that it's not chipped it's not cracked it's not broken there's not like a deep cut in it or, or whatsoever um it's just really all cosmetic scratches and i'm really happy about that part um, so the only part that I would see discolored are the rings up here and that's probably because the handle just kind of moved around and rubbed against it enough that it took off the gold um, the gold plating on it and um, so it, some parts of this ring is showing silver. And now underneath the bag, the feet, I mean obviously it's all um, you know, used and scratched up and discolored a little, but I mean, it's feet. It's meant to be used and protect the bottom of the leather. And I think it's done its job because the bottom looks amazing, right? I mean, there's discoloration on the corners, obviously, but overall, the bottom is so pristine and clean. And I feel like the corners are also due to um, the sagging of the bag. So that's another part that I can see. Um, I mean, overall, for uh, the Hermes Spa, I feel like they're gonna come back and quote me on a full cleaning, um, on touch-up areas, on discoloration. Um, and part two, I would say is restructuring. So you can see that this bag um, is, like, it's sagging enough that it's not exactly protruding lower than the feet yet so if you put it on like a hard table surface then you can still have the feet like hold it up enough that the leather is not touching the table but for a surface like my leather sofa here where it's soft it's gonna the bottom of the leather is gonna touch it um so over time that's just gonna wear out the leather especially when the corners tend to droop, droop a little bit more than the midsection here and hopefully they, um, I think that's a pretty major part that I'd like to see that this would be a little bit more restructured as well. Um, and also the flat part, it's very, um, 
it's very softened. So, uh, I just feel like it can it can be slightly restructured a little bit better. Um, not that I don't think they're gonna stiffen it up or anything like that, but there's just this narrowing bend here that I feel like they can they can touch up. And also these wings on the side, hopefully they that can be fixed a little bit more, like structure-wise. But overall, I I find that it's pretty cool that um, normally for Epson leather, it's um, tougher and harder to kind of like open. But for this, it's not the case. It's super easy to just open up like that, and you can see the sangles are really wobbly and softened, and I quite like that. Like it's an easy going back. So I can just even carry it like this unclosed. And um, also you might be wondering, like I've shown you the original lock and also the clochette, and you might be wondering like, what about the strap? So because this is a 1978 bag, it didn't come with a strap. And um, they didn't make straps until the early 80s, I believe. And so, um, yeah, so this item does not come with a strap and that's honestly not something that concerns me too much just because I feel like I can always add a strap to it um, with like out of my own collection, like my other collections, I can add a strap to it or um, put a twilly on it. Honestly, I uh, have tried both. I put the Evelyn strap on it just to see how it looks and then also um, I put it, um, my Maxi Twilly on it and I like the Twilly version a lot more just because it adds um, that pop of color that's kind of nice to it and um, kind of a soft uh, feeling to it. And on top of that, because this only has this one ring that's only meant for the handle, putting a strap on here um, with a ring it actually presses against this le um, leather handle piece here and I just feel like over time that's not very good for the leather and um, it'll just press against it enough that it's going to dent it, make it dirty, like have that like darkened black spot that, that happens. Um, and also over time I'm wondering if it's going to kind of mess with the stitching here as well and um, the glazing that's um, that hopefully they're gonna redo here. So I don't know, I almost feel like I don't want to go ahead and buy a new strap and have that, um, the issue with that, with the, with the strap hooks to go against the leather like that. So I'll think about that later on, but so far I'm fine even if I had to just use a twilly for um, a strap to, to, to have this bag hands free a little bit. But most of the time I can see myself carrying it on the crook of my arm. So another part is that I'm hoping that Hermes um, in New York City will keep it local, the whole repair and cleaning service, and I know that depends on what's being quoted and what, what needs to be done. Um, oh, another part that I would like to mention is that this turn lock is a little bit loose. Um, it's not super bad and I don't see myself wanting to replace this, honestly, um, just because I, I really, there's only some parts that's looser than others when I turn it. And I don't see myself using the turn lock that way. I don't depend on the turn lock. It's likely that I leave it open like this, or I just hook this on this way and have like a sangle just go over it like that. So I, I don't think I, um, I would, I mean, it's kind of half on timing and then half on the money either. Like, I feel like I don't know if I want to spend um, I know what's going to be an expensive repair on this part because they have to take apart this front panel in order to put a new uh, turn lock in. So, I mean, it really all depends on the whole thing uh, that's presented to me, but I highly doubt that this is in a bad enough condition that I would want to change out right now and to spend that money and time on it. So going back to time, I wanted to keep this local because I feel like it, it would be a faster cleanup and restructure um, and also the reglazing here. I don't know if that's pos um, something possible that can be done locally or if it needs to be shipped to, to France. Another reason why I'm reluctant to have it shipped to France is because I've heard that they're so backed up there that it's probably going to take somewhere between six to nine months, if not a year, for the bag to come back to me. And that kind of makes me feel very wary about the whole situation. 
um, and if that is the case I would rather wait a little longer until everybody's back into like a, a normalized working mode before I go ahead and ship this all the way to France um, another part is the shipping part like what if this gets lost in the mail and I know that I'm probably overthinking the whole situation but this is a vintage piece that is very hard to come by and um, I feel like it's so special that even if this was ever like lost and then replaced with a new piece that's not the same to me and um, that would just really make me really sad so I, uh, I am hoping that this can be kept um, local and overall once again I'm only seeing that it needs an, uh, a full cleanup and possibly discoloration touch up and then also restructuring of the sagging and then also the handle reglazing. And for the strap and swilly part, that's that's something for, for myself. So overall, I am super, super excited and happy uh, for this purchase. And I will go ahead and do some mod shots just to uh, let you see how it looks on me. I am five, four and a half, not quite five, five. And I am a dress size between, somewhere between a size zero and a size two. So again, I'm super, super happy about this purchase and I'm super excited to make my first adventure to Hermes and use their repair and cleaning services. I've never done that before. Uh, basically, I have all retail owned pieces, so I bought it directly from the store and most of them are within um, the last two years or so. So they're all in fair good condition, especially with the pandemic. I haven't really been out and about too much. The only other piece that's vintage is my Hermes Maasai PM size and I did do a video on that and I'll link that below just in case you want to see that again. Uh, that bag was purchased and I believe it was a 1999 bag and um, I did purchase that and had that authenticated and um, it's, it's also a, a bag that I really really love on a casual basis, on a da daily basis actually. I, I use that a lot even if I just um, have to pop out to the supermarket or something like that. Um, and the only thing really about that bag I feel like uh, is a cleaning that, that may be due later on. I feel like it's still in fair good condition right now. The bottom corners have a little wear to it so I might eventually take that to the spa as well. But overall I am excited to put this my very first piece through the spa and then hopefully it'll come back in a better condition where I feel safer using right now. Uh, the unsafe part is really the, the leather that seems to be easily scratched and um, this handle reglazing that needs to uh, kind of protect the edges of it. So I wouldn't want the handles to suddenly come undone and unravel over time. So uh, I just, I wanted to kind of review this bag a little bit more, like once or twice more over before I took the tag off here. And um, as you, some of you may know that once you do take the fashion file tag off, then it's yours to keep. So uh, I, I still have a little bit of time and I am in no rush to get this bag to the spa, but 
if I do get the back to the spot, I do want it back in my possession ASAP. Um, so yeah, so that's about it. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this unbagging of my new Kelly 28. Um, my, my very first, actually, my very first Kelly. So I'm super excited to have shared this with you. And uh, please look forward to my adventure to taking this into Hermes and getting uh, the quote unquote spa service um, to have it repaired, retouched, restored, and resurrected. I will see you all soon and I hope you stay well. Thank you. Bye bye.